Hey everyone, welcome back to part two to this video. So we're just going to um, wrap this thing up by creating our database and we're gonna connect to it and make sure we can store our users and protect our routes. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend it. We went through a bunch of setup and it wouldn't make sense to start from this uh, video. But um, in anyways, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I told you we're using Docker to set up our database. To set up our database. So I'm going to use Docker Compose. So I'm just going to say touch Docker dash hyphen compose .yaml. So this creates our Docker Compose file. I like Docker Compose because you can set up a bunch of um, services that you need in like under 15 lines of code, which is crazy. Um, like I'm going to set up a whole database now. So first and foremost, let's go to version is one. Um, so now we have to create our services and this service, I'll just call it DB. And now this service is going to use an image. Um, obviously I don't expect everyone to remember this, but it's Postgres colon 14 beta two hyphen Alpine, um, 3.14 Alpine pi. I just re I just realized that 3.14 is, is pi. Okay, so now we're also going to restart always. So if there's any issues, just solve this restart um, environment. Environment. Well, I can't spell. <clears throat> so this is going to be our environment variables that we can set. If you read the documentation on Docker for all these images, it tells you the environment names. So the first one is Postgres um, password, and our password is going to be password. We're going to have a Postgres um, user. I'm going to name this user root and then finally our database name. So that's going to be postgres um, db and that's just going to be auth server. Um, and now finally our ports. So now we're going to map our ports. So in this case, our ports are going to be the classic um, um, postgres ports. So 5432, 5432 over, over here. And we're pretty much done. In 12 lines of code, we have set up our database. So now all we have to do to set this up is say, let's clear this, um, docker compose up. Now I'm going to write it like this because I want to see all the terminal output to make sure everything is done correctly. And we see that we have no errors, so everything is good. So I'm just going to cancel out of this. Control C kills me out of the terminal. And now I'll do dot, the same command, but I'll do dash D. Dash D sets it up on a different process and doesn't really interrupt my terminal. So that's good. I don't really want to see it. So now we know that um, Docker is running with a container in the background. So now if we run go run main.go, um, we see that we have, we aren't getting the same database um, error we were getting before because we added code here to stop us, right? So we said if, if the create engine doesn't go through correctly, which does a ping, um, it's going to kill the, the, the process. So over here, this ensures that we are connected to the, the database. And because we are using sync as well, we are also creating um, tables on the fly, which is great. You know, I wouldn't personally use sync in production or in a real application, but for a quick app, like it's beautiful. Okay, so where were we? All right, so we need to check whether the sign up and the uh, login work correctly. Um, one thing I'm gonna do before that is gonna protect our routes right now. So what I'm going to do right now is protect our routes. So um, one thing I just noticed that we're basing it off the same app instance. Um, what usually happens in your real apps is that you have a group of routes that are protected and a group of routes that are private and a group of routes that require extra middlewares. So one thing great that Fiber has is it allows you to group your routes um, by variables or by name. So the way I'm gonna do that over here is here's my private route. I'm gonna say private, private is equal to app.group. And I'm just gonna name this um, forward slash private, private, cool. 
So that's going to be our private group over here. And I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here so that this gets used. So now since this has the name private, I don't want me to call this endpoint by private forward slash private. So I'm just going to delete this over, over here. I'm going to do the same thing with the public route at the bottom. So I'm just going to go over here, just do this as public over here and then public as well over here. Cool. So that does it for that. Um, so now we have to attach our middlewares. Now again, Fiber is amazing. It's just with the amount of lines of code to set up your authentication through JWT is like amazing. So over here, all we have to do is private.use. It's going to use a middleware. And this middleware is going to be provided by um, um, the fiber um, the fiber JWT package. So let's see if I'm using it here. I am not. So I'm just going to copy this down because it's going to be easier. Over here, JWT, uh, where if I save it, it goes away. So I just want to do that. And then I'll just copy this JWT where and I'll bring that down at the one. JWT where dot uh, new. So JWT, yeah, JWT where dot new. And this is from our fiber package. And then we're going to use the JWT where dot config. And this is going to be an object. So um, this has red squiggly lines over here. That means that um, the packages aren't really imported. So again, go mod tidy and goes amazing tool chain just kicks in, go mod tidy. It kicks in and pulls in the packages. And there you go. So now we have our JWT where over here. So now all you have to do in the config is to specify one thing and that is our secret. So um, signed, signing key, no, what is it called? Yeah, it's called signing key. Um, so our signing key is going to be an array of bytes. And again, this is going to be the same secret we use um, for creating our token. Just for this use case, I'm going to um, not make the name same. So this has secret. I'm going to name this secrets. Cool. And so now private uses our JWT middleware and our public doesn't. So it shouldn't be protected. So let's go over here and run go run main.go. So this creates our go server. So now we can go over here and create our user. So our user needs a name. It's going to be t.code. It's going to take in an email, which is, uh, it's going to be floyd-jones. And then finally, oops, whoa, IntelliSense. I don't even have GitHub Copilot. And then our password is going to be password over here. Cool. So now let's send this request and see what we get. If everything goes smooth, then it usually doesn't because this is programming. Okay, cool. So let's debug now. Header name must be valid HTTP token. Um, header must be valid HTTP token. So post 3000 local host, blah, 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 content type, application JSON. Uh, we got our body over here. My body. Okay. Oh, there we go. So it went through. Um, PQ relation does not exist. So there's something going on with the users because it sets up the database correctly and then it goes through our sign up and inserts the user over here. So let's see what is um, causing the hold up with this. So we go to our data. We have our ID, name, email, password, and we sync the user over here. So let's check our database. So if we go over here and go to our auth server and we go over here, we have our email name and password. We open the structure and that all looks good to me. Um, let's try once more. Let's stop our server, start it again, and let's make this request once more. So send and we have this going on. All right, so let me debug and let me come right back. Ah, uh, okay, I see what's going on. Yeah, again, pointer to a pointer, I forget. Um, we only need to pass in a pointer to a memory address. So let's um, restart this and that should fix that. So if we send that request in and there we go. So now we get our user back, 
we don't get the password back. Remember what we did um, a few minutes ago. We get our token back and that's all cool. All right, so this is our token. Now I could, yeah, let's let's use this token over here. Let's use this token over here in our private route. So the way we do that is we say authorization and we go bearer and then we paste that in here. So now let's send the request and it says invalid or expired JWT. Now remember what we did, we um, made some differences between our actual secret and then the secret that is protecting the routes. So let's bring this back to what it actually is, which is just secret. Restarting the server, send the request, and there we go, a successful request. We have a 200 um, status code response and we get this back. And if you notice on our public route, there is no um, JWT token present, and but we can send the request and it cannot get back properly. Oh, it's a 404, it just means that the name is wrong. Oh yeah, it's public public. So if I go over here, save that, restart, um, and then send request, there you go, it's completely good. So now let's test our login, right? We've done our sign up, let's test our login. So our login is going to be the same body minus the name. Um, the password should be the same. And just to make sure the password um, mechanism actually works, let's actually make this different. So we'll call this password one. We'll send the request in and that isn't right. We aren't properly hashing, correct, uh, correctly checking the passwords, which is true. <laughs> I don't remember actually implementing that. Yeah, we did not. So just when we checked if the user exists, which it does, we just straight up um, check for the token. So we still need to verify the password and stuff. So we're just gonna do that. So if error is equal to, is equal to bcrypt dot compare hash and password. So we're gonna pass in our hash, which is going to be from our user dot password. So it's gonna be an array of bytes and it's going to come from our user dot password and then we are also going to pass in our array of array of bytes. Oops, what happened there? Array of bytes, and it's going to be the password that was sent in in the request. So we'll do request.password over here. We'll check if there is an error. And if there is an error, we're just gonna be returning the error over here. So now let's restart this over here, the server. Let's actually clear this and then restart the server. And now if we send a request in, we see that the hash password is not, um, sorry, hash password is not the hash of the given password. So, so this we know that it's working correctly. We change this to the actual password, we save it and send the request. We get a successful response back with a correct token, which we can verify as well as copy that token over here and paste that token in the header. Now finally, let's send a request and we get our 200 response over here. And that is it. This is how you create a Golang web server um, and you attach some authentication behind it through JWT. And you see how easy it is with Fiber. Um, in all of my Golang personal projects, I do use Fiber. Um, it has very simple API within um, with also it's good library support. Like there's a bunch of third party fiber supported um, packages that you can use outside of even, um, outside of even um, middleware JWT support. There's a bunch of other things that people make and are open source just for fiber. And it's also blazing fast, which I like to talk about. All right, so um, that is pretty much the end of this video. We created a Golang web server with fiber we used XORM as our database client and we used Docker to instantiate our database and make calls to it. And that's pretty much it guys. If you did like this video, um, please show your support down in the comment section or give me a thumbs up, it really goes a long way. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.